characteristic of a good leader is being able to push through the hard times, um, especially and be able to show everybody how, you know, you have to outwork everybody else as a leader and you have to show people, hey, if we work hard and we really put our heads down and we grind through it, because um, when, like an, any entrepreneur knows in the beginning, you know, you're not necessarily generating revenue yet. It's not, it's not, the vision is still a long, far away away. So uh, a leader needs to be able to show everybody, hey, I'm going to work harder than you guys. And if you guys work, let's try and match me, then, you know, being able to present your vision and show people that you guys can all get there, but you have to do it together. Um, letting people know that you need them um, just as much, if not more than they need you in order to reach your vision. That's that's the most important thing you know, that I can think of a leader needs to be able to do. Welcome to the Nicholas Brown Podcast, a podcast talk show about real estate investing, business leadership, and personal development. Each week, we explore current real-life case studies about how to build financial independence through investing in real estate to build your personal portfolio through passive income models, along with interviews from the top business leaders and personal development leaders. Now, here's your host, Nicholas Brown. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode, what is the season two of the leadership um, episodes? Well, I got a great, a great co-partner edition where they're gonna 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 break down where they're 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 investors in the real estate field also, but they're very unique, ladies and gentlemen. So I may have to get them back for another episode because we can get, like I said, I get passionate, as you guys know, that I may have to break this down or meet them at another another time. But I, just, I want you guys to get to know them because we're gonna motivate, teach, and get the perspective. perspective, perspective, as you all guys already know. But make sure if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. If you're listening in on your podcast um, channel, whatever podcast, whether you Spotify or uh, iTunes or whatever, make sure you guys download that. Also, it's gonna get this is nugget information. So what I'm gonna do, as you guys know, I'm gonna read the about section, and we're gonna get straight to it. Okay. So today's guest is Kiru co-owners Clyde Yelverton and Logan Gerard. Gerard, right? Gerard. Correct? Gerard. Yeah. Gerard. Yeah. Okay. Co-owner Logan Gerard is an enthusiastic entrepreneur with experience starting, developing, and managing real estate investment companies at a high-level business operator and growth strategist dedicated to helping Kiru keep up with rapidly growing demand for the company's services. Logan ensures that all divisions of the business are optimized and performing. His ability to construct optimal workflows and enforce scalable system is fast growing entrepreneurial ventures continuously allows the company to outperform its competitors. Prior to finding Kiro, Kiro, Logan graduated from Southern Methodist University, okay, with a BBA degree in finance and a BA degree in economics from the Cox School of Business. The following year, Logan then earned his Master of Science in Finance, also from the Cox School of Business, before starting an investment sales, a, starting as an investment sales agent with a local real estate investment group. When he left to start his business, he led his teams, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, to close more than $8.2 million in acquisitions within the first 90 days, not nine years, not... <laughs> 90 days, three months of the company, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, repeat that. If, you, if your salesman's listening, your real estate and your leaders, leaders are listening, this is the purpose of this. He I led his wrong, team baby. to the close <laughs> more than 8.2 billion with an M in acquisitions within the first 90 days of the company. In his, in his entrepreneurial career, Logan has transact, transacted over 350, 350 real estate investment properties, congratulations, brother, including multifamily and residential assets for more than 60 million in volume. Next, we have co-owner Clyde Yelverton, ladies and gentlemen, are you Alabama, correct? U of A? Right, right, yep. right, right, right. Thumbs up. <laughs> right. As a serial overachiever, 
Clive brings the energy and experience needed to scale Kiru to become a national player in the residential real estate market. Clive has spent over spent the past four years working at Ernest & Young, advising and implementing business processes at the, some of the nation's largest publicis, pub, publicity, publicly, I'm sorry, publicly traded companies. His background in process autom automation and people management has allowed him to develop leading practices in strategy development, incentiv incentivization programs, project management, and next wave technology solutions. Klein has a passion for building business systems. Business system, listen to that key word, ladies and gentlemen, kit systems. They're rapidly scale, scale, systems and scale companies. And he does this by building a culture, culture, that's another word, key word, culture, relentlessly focus on the continuous, continuous improvement of people, processes, and technologies. Reach out to Logan and Clyde on their LinkedIn. You can reach out to Clyde, uh, Clyde, which is Clyde Yelverton, correct, for LinkedIn, yep. and Logan and Logan Gerard, correct, for LinkedIn. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the show. All right. Thanks for, Thanks for the intro. All right. All right. Now, I'm excited to have you guys because you guys are unique. And yeah. once again, you guys are listening and watching. Tune in to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is powerful. Here's an example right here. I say that every, every time. So it's good networking and it builds relationship building. Would you guys agree? Absolutely. Did, Nick, did we meet through LinkedIn or maybe we met at a networking event? We met, we met at a networking. You know? but I'll tell you a left. funny tangent about <laughs> LinkedIn. Um, so my background, you just read it, but I was, I used to work um, in consulting for four and a half years or whatever. When I wanted to get into real estate, I set a goal of myself to reach out to 10 people a day on LinkedIn. And that's how Logan and I met initially. Wow. Um, exactly. But that's how I met a ton of people in the real estate area. But real LinkedIn is a great tool if you use it. And we it's find powerful, out. It's powerful, right? It's powerful. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Look what you guys have created together, man. So it works, man. It's by relationship building also and try to see if it's a fit for our culture, which that's what it gets gets to also when we talk about jets, which I and once again, I know we can get past we can talk about all types of subjects, which is leadership. But what motivated you? Teach us something about leadership skills and lead, and pretty much your feel, how you guys started, give us some tips on that. Anyone want to start their business together if it's the right culture together which i believe in culture also mm -hmm. that's where it's not false force for everyone has the same model or same mission where they want to get to would you guys agree on that too <laughs> so yeah. that's what i want you guys to teach or what works for you guys company and give us a, a, a us a perspective on entrepreneur and your business you know we'll try to do that we'll try to do that in 15 20 minutes ladies and gentlemen <laughs> that's watching and listening we will try to do that so we will start Either one of you guys that want to start first, what what motivated you guys to start your business? And what guys motivated you to uh what motivated you to start your business together? What got you started in your field, which is actually in the real estate field, correct? Yes. Okay. You want to you want to take it first or yeah. Well, you can start because you started talk about fair yeah, so and how we came together. I, you know, I've always had an entrepreneurial aspect or side of me, like ever since I was a kid. So you know, okay. mowing lawns and I just started a stationary company, which actually was one of my friends, Clark Rogers called Kogan. Um, and that's actually still existing today, but we used to just go and walk door to door and sell stationary. The stationary was horrible, but people bought it. <laughs> um, and so then I went to, obviously I went to SMU, which you mentioned earlier, and I worked at another company for about a year. And, you know, I've always been a self-motivated person, especially doing sales, you know, okay. in sales, you kind of eat what you kill. And so right. I did that for about a year and I just, I've always liked leading teams, working with other people and kind of, you know, being able to be my own boss. So I left and started what was Fairpack Properties and, you know, once I met Clyde, we kind of switched over from Fairpack Properties. We rebranded the company as Kiru, but okay. Fairpack Properties was a wholesaling company. And so, you know, okay. I'm sure a lot of your listeners are familiar with wholesaling. Right. It's kind of a gray area, a gray part of real estate. Um, a lot of wholesalers aren't liked. So Clyde and I started working on Kiru, and that's when we kind of came up with our new model and our KeyMax hybrid solution, which is, you know, rather than us saying, hey, we're going to buy your house for 
this much and then we're really just assigning the contract for huge fees um we actually help people we bid their properties up with investors and try and get people more mm. money in their pocket than they get from any other you know any wholesaler who's more or less may not be telling you the truth about what they're doing with the house you know now we have a very transparent focused business model you know it makes it easier for us to work with sellers sellers like it and so that's what we've been working on and it's just back to the entrepreneurial thing i'll wrap that up it just it, it's fun and it's exciting to come up with new ideas and be able right. to work with good people and actually kind of send that out into the world and have see how people respond to it especially when they like what you're doing so it's been fun okay, okay. Yeah. one one before you start um clyde i'm definitely got to let you guys know i'm going to ask you what's your what's your definition of leadership because you guys are entrepreneurs so once we finish with clyde i'm going to come back to you logan and give us give us just tell me what do you think leadership is you know okay. boom we'll get that so mr clyde what, yeah. what motivates you <laughs> so i will say um well we met one in terms of like leadership and finding uh partners that was one of your initial questions Sure. It's hard and you have to find someone you can go to battle with. Like we fight it out all the time, but it's out of love. You know, we That's just, right. we argue because we want, we have high expectations, which is good. Right. Exactly. Um, but there's, there's a book you've probably heard of. It's called Traction. And then yeah, yeah. Fuel. yeah. it talks about a visionary and an integrator. And we read the basically bios of those personalities and we were like, damn, that is us. <laughs> so right, right. That was really helpful in us, like segregating the roles. Um, and you know what, and we've, we've even talked about this weekend, but it's like, what are you good at? What am I good at? And how can we both Vis do is our that the thing? Vision and integrator part? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm reading. It. I just got that book um, and yeah. I want to start a group side note. I'm glad yeah. it's funny how you guys talk about that. Cause I, my yeah. goal is to get the writer of those books on a show also, but that was my should, goal. Yeah, once they're... I started recruiting to get with like-minded, cause I want to do that. I'm a visionary. I'm yeah. I'm more visionary. I, I love to be an integrator, but I I I lose interest quick. So, so I really, yeah, I, really I don't love the term integrator, but uh, okay, uh, that is what I book. am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just go, by, I, but y'all work together though, right? Visionary and architect. I think I like architect okay. better, but you know, we're still working through the, the nomenclature. Okay. Um, but yeah. so Logan and I, you know, we met and we start. We really met through multifamily investing, and that's where okay. we're both. Because Logan was trying to get out of um, residential real estate with Fairpack properties and move into the multifamily space, which is we actually met at a multifamily networking event. Now I'm remembering. Um, that's but, how I met you, by the way. Also, yeah, exactly. That's how right. I knew that. Um, but then Logan had Fairpack properties, and what we were kind of planning to do is do like some wholesaling on the side while we focus on building our multifamily yeah. business. Um, but then we came up with this new business model in Kiru, which is the more transparent approach to finding investment properties um, and like, you know, wholesaling, it works, like we've done it too, but you just act like a cash buyer, but really you're just, you're selling it to assigning it to an investor. Right. Uh, so we just kind of flip the script basically. And we have, you know, custom contracts for our business and our um, whatever transactions. So it's just been a very effective, you know, our lead conversion has gone from two and a half percent to like 25% um, really? just because of, yeah. Wow. Um, because of, the way we run our business and everything and the, this new business model. But talking about leadership and like thoughts on the company, I wasn't really crazy about the wholesaling thing. Like it's a good way to make money and neither was Logan's kind of like, this feels weird, you know? Okay. So, and I always have just forever, just I think if you're going to do something, you might as well do it big. Like why try and do something small when you can right. just do it big? I feel like it's a similar amount of work. People are out there doing it. So it's like, right. how can... So we had to think, you know, start from the drawing board and think, how can we create and design a business that can scale nationally? It's like, is wholesaling going to do it? Probably not. We have to come up with a new innovative solution and a disruptor in the industry, which is how we came up with Kiru. Um, and, you know, it continues to tweak, but the vision is still remain the same um, of just becoming the largest, most trusted home, home selling service provider in the country. Um, but, you know, we had... The wholesaling, you kind of feel weird. So Kiru, now it's, it's like, I can put my face on Kiru. I can go on podcasts. Whereas like wholesaling is like, ah, it's kind of a gray area. Now sure. we're like, we want to wear Kiru shirts. We just, somebody just came in and gave them Kiru pens. Um, awesome. But awesome. we we wanted to create a business that we can lead and that we can be proud to lead. 
which is nationwide, right? You guys are nationwide. It's not nationwide yet, but we are oh, yeah, in most we states. Get there. Yeah, yeah, okay. we're You're yeah. growing as you speak. Put it like yeah, this. we're growing and we're growing quickly. You know, we like we said earlier, we rolled everything out in January, so we're still in first year. But yeah. I mean, it's been it's scaling it's, really quick, and we're just trying to get you know our DFW presence right hammered out, and then we can start to move into other markets. Our goal is still to move into another market by the end of this year, um, but to be determined if we hit that, but we should. We hope so. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So four, I got to repeat that. So 4% to 25%? 2.5%. Two and a half. Wow, okay. Correction. Wow, that's strong, man. That's awesome, man. So you guys yeah. got the system. And that, that was a combination of things from, you know, most wholesalers and what we used to do, or I did with Fairfax Properties, like you do outbound cold calling and text messaging, that kind of spammy uh, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. find way to find deals. So when we rebranded as Kiru, we got rid of all of that. So we don't do any outbound lead generation now. All of our lead generation, everything is just done through. And we work with a really high-end, great marketing agency. We have a really good marketing director. So everything we do now is to generate inbound leads. So okay. it's a, obviously lead conversion goes up a little just from the fact people are now calling us rather than us calling them. Right. Um, but also just the traction we've got with the, with the Keymax hybrid solution. And, yeah. you know, we've gotten a lot of people who, you know, just want to give us a shot and see if we can get them a higher price. And we come back and we they're like, oh, I got an offer that was 10 or 15 grand, whatever it was lower, they got multiple offers. And it's because they're from other wholesalers. So a lot of, you know, people don't really know what wholesalers are, or whether or not that person's really the cash buyer. So trying right. to educate people on that. And we do that, you know, before we actually enter any sort of agreement with them. And I think that that's, you know, the combination of all those things is what had gotten that number to where it is. This is Dane Fuentes with Cumulus Media, and you guys are listening to the Nicholas Brown Podcast Show. That's awesome. That's and awesome. so like we, and what also plays into that is just the, we, our goal is to find anyone can come to Kiru and we find the best solution to sell your home. So like we're starting our brokerage, like we have a licensed broker in house and we're getting the legal work, legal documents set up. So we'll have our own brokerage so we can list, you know, we can buy it ourselves and add it to our portfolio. Um, Cause we're having the process of doing a fundraise so we can start acquiring properties much more aggressively where you know, in the past, it's just kind of been out of our own pockets. Um, and then the Keymax Hybrid, which is really like our flagship offering, like, because Keymax Hybrid is the, we're bidding your property up and anything above a certain percentage on their end, not from the homeowners, goes back to the homeowners. So if we can bid it up, money gets back in the homeowner's pocket. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking you get a lot of referrals from that. Uh, we do. Just for helping yes. clients it's... out because you're unique. You know, and it's starting to roll a little bit as well with that. Yeah. So it's just been picking up a lot for us. Okay. Okay. That method. So I'm going to ask you guys this then, because you guys got a certain role. You guys are unique. What is leadership to you, Logan? So Logan first. I, mean, I would, especially from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I think sure. the most, most important aspect of a you know good leader, what characteristic of a good leader is being able to push through the hard times, um, especially and be able to show everybody how, you know, you have to outwork everybody else as a leader and you have to show people, hey, if we work hard and we really put our heads down and we grind through it, because um, when like an, any entrepreneur knows in the beginning, you know, you're not necessarily generating revenue yet. It's not, it's not, the vision is still a long, far away away. So uh, a leader needs to be able to show everybody, hey, I'm going to work harder than you guys. And if you guys work, let's try and match me, then, you know, being able to present your vision and show people that you guys can all get there, but you have to do it together. Um, letting people know that you need them um, just as much, if not more than they need you in order to reach your vision. That's, that's the most important thing, you know, that I can think of a leader needs to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great answer. Appreciate that. Mr. Clyde, what's yeah. your... Um, and I love that this is your topic because that's just so important. And it, you hear about leadership a lot, but then when you see it in the day-to-day -day operations, you're like, it is huge. Particularly, but it uh, varies, though. That's what people don't realize. Yeah. That leadership varies, and it and if you don't guys know, it's about cult. It's culture to me. 100 percent. I don't yeah. really. I don't want everyone on my team. 
yeah. they don't have my vision. And it does. All of vision. So yeah. Go ahead. But it, I mean, it, it takes leadership, but particularly like sales team and acquisitions team. Like you have to have someone who is actually leading the charge because it's hard for someone to come in and people, you know, the, I believe everyone has leadership abilities in them. And that's and also just my view on leadership. You're asking about that is that yeah. I see my success as a leader is what I leave behind, what I can grow under me, essentially, like growing other people to become leaders themselves. Um, and then so that's been big for us is just, you know, having leaders, strong leaders driving the charge. Then one person's doing it, you're like, oh, I got to do this. If, you know, they're setting the tone, basically. Um, and it's hard sometimes to find that because um, it's we're trying to build a business that can grow. And that means we don't want to be in the day to day. We have to show everyone every little detail. We want people that are coming in and figuring out how to do things on their own and are growing their own team and are growing like, because we're like, look, we're small. We believe in other people. We don't want to take the glory of whatever. We want you to, you know, succeed. We want people to open their own offices, have their own podcast or whatever, trying to grow their book of business within Kiro. So I think it's trying to provide an environment that we can grow a team and that they feel comfortable to be able to like become their own leader. This is Kobe Zinn from the FLA podcast, and you're listening to the Nicholas Brown podcast show. Okay. My thing is that as they know when I used to have a team, which I'm building a team, be responsible as an individual, but work as a team because we try we got the same mission. We're trying to get to the same level. So if you need me, you know, I will help you. But if you constantly need me and I const I sent you the information, information there right there, we're gonna I'm gonna have to veer away because you waste you 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 taking over the time that we're trying to meet our mission to get yeah. flow going so that's why i say be responsible as an individual we'll work as a team i do it like football you may be yeah. the quarterback right now maybe the running back let's do the wildcat we just try to get that's to right. the goal yeah, line. exactly you know, just take that temporary position then we'll get there so that's why i say be responsible something I, along those lines that i've heard um that always resonated with me it's different because i am actually the owner now but it was uh, an older guy just told me to think like an owner. He's like, I try to convince my employees, just like, think like an owner. And right. I've thought of that. I was like, that's very true because you go and ask whoever's above you or whoever the, the owner is or whatever. And it's like, they're just going to say, figure it out. Like I can, maybe I'm better at <laughs> figuring it out because I am right. an owner, but I'm not, I shouldn't be. So it's like trying to just build a culture that people are thinking like an owner of their own book of business, you know? Right, right. And if it's flexible to me, if it's flexible, mm -hmm. someone got to leave. It's just like Robert Kawasaki book, the B&I side. You're mm -hmm. the head of the table right now, but I'm on your right hand side. So if I ever have to switch and take your temporary position at that time, at least I have a mindset in the culture where we're just trying to get to the next level together. So I understand yeah. you guys ways you would you would, you would, uh, Clyde Logan kind of not bump heads, but you know, uh i've got political not political but but speak your point just to get to the next level yeah. right so yeah <laughs> was that strong so i think you have to have that on a team you know you have to trust people and be that's what makes I want the best it. Team, my i want it i want it yeah. at times especially if we have a meetings you know what, what's what's working what's not working how can we improve it you know yeah, yeah. that's one thing clyde and i tell everybody all the time we're like we don't want to do any, we don't want to do this at all. They're like, <laughs> we're like, we don't want to do any. This is, this is why we, we were working with you. Why we wanted you on the team is because we know that you can run, run with it and do yeah. it all on your own. You don't right. need us. And we don't, you know, we don't want to do it. That's what we have. Yeah. You. We want to focus on growing the business, you know, right. You, know, right. you to build your section of the business. That's your own piece mm -hmm. of Kiru. So that's really what we kind of, promote to everybody that's on the team now is it gelling now is that gelling i'm gonna get to the next question though for teaching or something is that gelling or can you teach us something about your business that'll lead to the next thing so is that part gelling where if i was a new hire and you, you expect me to do i don't know uh the incoming calls or whatever is that working for this position or you guys got to adjust to move them because you know what nicholas you're not, you're not fit for that we're not going to get rid of you but can you go to this next feel yeah. a position we I have right now because you want to keep them because they're good people i do i would love yeah, to keep exactly people. and i mean yeah we never want to let someone go you know we prefer to build from within or whatever um but i think one thing we could have done better it is now gelling but it took a little bit more time and that come the fault is on us is because we could have set clear expectations from the jump of like 
these are things, specific tasks you can do to not to like generate deals and generate leads and stuff like that. Whereas the way our approach was more of here, we gave people, you know, training and like, this is the things you can do, but we didn't really hold hand handhold from the beginning to like get people rolling and then where they can grow their own team. We kind of just were like, here, everyone go do this. And then it resulted in people not really doing it. Maybe we gave them too much because we were like, look, this is everything we know, basically. <laughs> like, right, that is right. what we've done that's been successful. Here's try this. And people did that. But what helped a lot was one leadership. Like we've had, you know, we play games, we do different things where we'll okay. jump in with the team and like do sales and do acquisitions or whatever it may be. Um, and that helps just because people see us and like, oh, I'm getting on the phones, I'm doing all this stuff. Um, but what we're doing, we started doing more recently is just providing more clear steps on like exactly what needs to be done. So then people get a couple of reps in, you know, what I don't want to be a task rabbit. No one wants to be a task rabbit. And but <laughs> it helps sometimes at the beginning. You know, you follow a recipe in a in a cooking something, you follow a recipe twice, the third time you're cooking it on your own. You don't need the okay. recipe anymore. So it's kind of like that. So um, give us a tip. Give us a tip. That's 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 teaching something. Give us one yeah, of you guys the, give us the a tip, tip is to be give very explicit instructions for people that are new for the first couple weeks, month um, that they're on, being onboarded. It's going to be like not that comfortable because it, you don't want to be giving someone tasks. But if you do give someone tasks, it helps them see what it takes and also see the end results. And then from there, they're like, okay, now I realize I can do it. And now they're a chef. They can come up with, you know, their own recipes from right, there. Right, right. So, they can tweak it their way, but at least they mm -hmm. got their basic model yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. And we've also, we found it really helpful to kind of share numbers with everybody. So, you know, mm -hmm. most of everything we do tracks. So if you're making yeah. phone calls or adding, you know, disclosing new buyers uh, with the CRM we have, you know, all these things are, we can track. We can look at actual hard numbers. And so one guy might, sell one you know two houses in a week or whatever and now we can say we can go and actually look and we say okay well he just made you know 200 yeah. phone calls and he added 10 new investors to his list and he sold two mm -hmm. two houses this week there's a direct correlation between you know the results and what it took to get those results so sharing those numbers with everybody where everyone can also see what everyone else is doing um and back to you know with the culture we have everyone it's competitive for sales you know sales guys are competing yes. to sell everything but at the same time, everyone's working together. I mean, we've got guys, sales guys are training other sales guys. They're all trying That's to good. help each other. And so sure. um, sharing those numbers and stuff, then it gives the other sales guy an opportunity to say, okay, well, what did he do differently? And he can just go ask and that person, you know, they're, they're going to help them. So it's really just helping everybody. I love that, man. I love it. I'm always, I'm always a person that be happy to help someone because I never worry about you know you taking because I know there's plenty out there and I never burn bridges. If someone try to burn me for a sale when I used to sell cars, whatever, I say you can have it, dude. You can have that deal. You know, yeah. then nine times out of ten, they didn't take care of the customer. The customer come back to me with other referrals or whatever. But I believe in building bridges. I don't. I look at the after effect of helping people. So mm -hmm. that's why you guys are unique for you your business also. Am I correct? So that's why that presents percentages building up you're educating your client for the real estate what they're going through something that's that they've never been a part of it's some temporary that you guys are professional to educate them where you take them to the next level and now that's just about to snowball where you're yeah. getting all these referrals and people that want to be part of you guys business now it's like a law of magnetism i believe in magnetism too mm -hmm. you know so that's why i want to present that also i'm so excited for you guys so what's your perspective on your business far as you just tell me far as real estate or far as leadership what's your perspective on today's market these next three to six six months or whatever what's going on give us a perspective on uh, leadership or your business or whatever you guys go for it in terms of the market you know it's definitely going to be i think it's going to be a very interesting i think we are kind of going into a recession right now um right. i think interest rates are going to go up at, well we know they're going to go up at least once more so you know there's tons of money out there still, which is also the crazy thing. People are always investing in real estate. So people will continue to buy. I think there's going to be a lot more people wanting to sell. Um, you really? Know, particularly with like DFW market. I don't personally don't think, you know, the market's not going to go backwards. We're not, you know, anyone who bought a house in the last year when it was really peaking was growing, home values were growing at 20% a year or whatever it was. Uh, 
anybody bought houses, then their house isn't going to be worth less money, but it is slowing down and we're kind of seeing that now. Um, and it's not going backwards. That's, that's the big thing. I know a lot of people are saying it's going to, uh, but we you know, believe strongly, especially in some of these bigger major cities like Dallas, uh, you know, the market's going to be consistent. It always is. And real estate has always had historically, you know, extremely high returns just from appreciation right. and holding on to, to the assets. So, yeah. yeah, I think right now, um, one we're seeing, I mean, the market's been shifting as everyone knows. Um, but we're seeing investors being a little more hesitant to there's, there's still, you know, we can still sell our deals or whatever, but as far as we've been working to put together a fund, so we can, I was saying we can more aggressively start acquiring properties. Um, by, you know, just leveraging it with a fund. Uh, but people are hesitant and they're because they're not sure about the market. But I think right now is a perfect, is the optimal time to invest in single family real estate because okay. people are looking at it from like, oh, what's the market going to do? Well, guess who else is looking at that? Sellers are. And so they're selling at a discount and it's a great time to buy. Um, and you're able to, it's hard to get properties sold right now. You know, as you move into this phase of the market, properties start staying and they're listing, staying on the market for 45, 60 days, whatever it is. Um, it's because people are hesitant. But if you're, I mean, I think the the big players, like people who have been really successful, go, they see times like this as a time to capitalize. And I think that's right. what it's, is the right thing to do right now. Because um, yeah, the market may go down a little bit, but I think it's a perfect time to jump in. So they're the ones that are grabbing and holding. Exactly. They want to hold, they got, as we call it, long money. They can hold it. They can buy it at a good price, a fair price mm -hmm. with them and go long term. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. The true, yeah. Yeah, and what a, a lot of people don't realize too with like single family investings, you know, obviously we saw an incredible amount of just general appreciation, you know, in the 20s, 20% 20 range. Um, but a lot of people don't realize like for rental rates, you know, the market rent, people are locked in sometimes on three year or longer contracts that they're living at these houses as you know in rental properties so the rental rate and the actual market value of you know what houses should be renting for it kind of trails actual appreciation so we you know we're expecting the market rental rates to continue to rise over the next year year two years um will start going up and it's kind of going to be catching up to the growth that we've seen with actual just home values yeah this is Dane Fuentes with Cumulus Media, and you guys are listening to the Nicholas Brown Podcast Show. Let me ask you a question on that. Since you guys been in the market buying investment props and fixing them up or been, been with investors that's holding whatever cash flow, a regular buyer of a property, let's say I was a seller, and I was going to list it for a hundred, but it went all the way up to one hundred and thirty thousand. Do you guys feel like this adjusting now? Things adjusting, where it's actually it's, it's starting to actually people are actually selling it not for one thirty now. Now they're probably selling the true value of one hundred to probably one hundred and five. Are y'all getting that? Are we getting that in the DFW area compared to other areas in the nation? I, you know, I think that I think homes are selling at their true value. I think the true value is now. You know, now that the values have gone up, that's just the new true value. Um, what the, I think people are still selling. It's a year ago, people were putting the house on the market for a million dollars and selling it for one point three. You know, that house yeah. is probably still worth one point three today. But it, the days of people listing stuff and people going in and buying it the first day that it's you know okay. been posted out. Yeah. That's not happening. It's not selling immediately necessarily, but people are still paying those prices. It just may take a little bit longer. Um, gotcha. So it's just a little bit longer days on market. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. And just in general, uh, like the market. So we met, I was telling you through multifamily and we were all about multifamily. What we've seen in multifamily has been explosive growth the past five, 10 years, whatever. Yes. It's been a great asset class. I still think it is a really good asset class. But for the first time since 2000 this year, we saw negative net absorption in May for multifamily. Um, and that's what's that showing is that there's now too many multifamily units on the market and mm. not enough people to fill those. And what we're seeing happen is the age bracket that's really drawn, driven this multifamily growth, which is the you know 35 to 45 year olds are now looking to move to single family rental. And with the 
you know, how home affordability being off the charts, like no one can afford a home. <laughs> like it's not like it was back in the nineties. You can't just buy a house. Right. People are now looking to move to single family because they're growing their family and they've really driven this multifamily growth. Um, but now that they have a family within their, <laughs> within their, you know, apartment building, they're like, we need to move to a house. And so we're seeing that it's just more of like a macro trend that people are starting to move into single family. That's another reason I think mm. like yesterday was the best day to invest in single family. The next best day is today. Um, and I think it's it, like we got into multifamily. I think single family right now is a better in investment just personally, um, yeah. just because of this trending demographic, a number of things like we've already mentioned, but I'm like, we're behind schedule. We need to start buying all of these properties ourselves and holding them. Get prepared. Preparation um, I think that's how, destination. I mean, that's how yeah. people who are successful, they have to see times like this as opportunities, not like, oh, let's wait to see what everyone else does. I think we have to be aggressive. I think once people start being more aggressive, then it'll start flowing. But right now, people are a little bit hesitant. People are still buying, but they're just a lot more hesitant than they were, you know, six months ago. Gents, do you hear this, ladies and gentlemen? See how they have the vision? <laughs> they have the vision. That's awesome, man. But it makes sense, you know. So yeah. the demand is just adjusting from multifamily now to residential. There's more demand, supply and demand. But, you know, now we can't find enough properties, I think, now. It's going to come that route where you can't find enough properties for the right type of client the government is trying to get these people approved for the loans but they don't have any properties at this time am i right it's hard to find is that probably yeah. you guys getting that and i'm gonna let you go because like i said we could have did another episode but i'm gonna let you go go ahead yeah. but what's your thoughts on that right quick and we'll cut cut it off you know i don't i wouldn't necessarily say it's super hard to find properties it's just you know as from an invest investor standpoint you know it's very We're residential right? really i'm talking about residential yeah. rather for, yeah. for us investors yeah that's easy for yeah. me it's easy you know oh, so it's just like if you were looking for a home to live in yeah it, what's I your mean, guys experience on that because you guys you guys are unique are you getting um home buyers also or are you just get, working with investors that are you attracting more investors or a little bit we, both? we focus on uh attracting homeowners Homeowners, so we work period. with investors okay. as well, and we, you know, we have a sales team that's focused on that. But we don't, we don't work on, we don't serve people that are looking to buy a home from the okay. just re live in a home standpoint. We focus okay. with investors and then with homeowners. We may get to that point, but right now we aren't, we aren't like listing, looking for Great. people with listing to buy a home. Essentially, I'm glad you guys clarified it. That's why I want the yeah. listeners and the watchers to know what makes your your company yeah. unique on there, on there. So yeah. that's strong. Okay. All right, gents. So how can the guys get in contact with you guys? I appreciate you guys' time. I appreciate you coming on here. Um, I'd love to have you on for another episode in time, too. Yeah, we well, appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your time, you know, just inviting us on. It really means a lot. But as far as contacting LinkedIn, I check LinkedIn, um, Clyde Yelverton, and then you can Clyde at MyKiru.com. You know. okay. okay. Yeah, you, can, you guys can email me at Logan at MyKiru.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram to my dot Kiru and you know, you can message us on Instagram. We've got a, a social media manager. So we'll make sure that we can uh, get in contact back with you from, from social media. So reach out to us through any of those ways. Okay. Well, thanks again, gents. And I wish you guys, I, I'm just excited to have you and to be a part of this. And ladies and gentlemen, you guys don't know if you're watching here, if you're not from the DFW area, but they're all over the TV channels. I, saw, I love your commercials also. You guys got great you. commercials on there also. Much as well. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. As always, in don't condemn, don't complain, because you have a choice to make a change. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on the Nicholas Brown Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, www.nickbrowninc.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like this show and you are a new real estate investor, then check out one of Nicholas's free reports called the Wholesale Dominator Report. Also located on our website, www.nickbrownie.com slash free reports. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. And remember, don't condemn, don't complain, because you have a choice to make a change. Have a great day.